What is up, FBG fam? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video where in today's video, we are going to do the ultimate guide to Yelan. We're going to be answering every question, hopefully every question that you may have on Yelan. We're going to be talking about her kit, her skills, artifacts, constellations, weapons. We're going to break it all down so that way, hopefully, after seeing this video and after seeing this guide, you will know everything that you need to know about Yelan, so that way you are ready, prepared, and you have her set day one. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's helpful. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it because I know this video might be a tad bit lengthy. I don't want it to be too long, but let's go ahead and jump straight into it. And once again, this is for beginners and intermediates. Obviously, if you're a veteran, you know what to do. You know what's going on. But for my beginner and intermediate players, hopefully this guide helps. So, Yelan, she's going to be coming out, I believe, Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, May 31st. And she's going to be a 5-star Hydro Bow user. Main DPS oriented, but we'll get to, into that more here in just a second. So, if we take a look at her stats, pretty nice stats. Uh, obviously, the one that you're going to be focusing on and worried about is the HP mainly now we know she's going to be more main dps oriented because of the crit rate ascension usually if a character's crit damage or crit rate it leads to them being a main dps right now here are the ascension materials that you're going to need to get her from level 1 to level 90 it's going to require the hydro chunks the new boss material that the one that's in the chasm the serpent the uh seashells the fatui insignias and then of course the mora so all of this you can get right now even if you're a beginner or an immediate player or you just started the game you should be able to get this material right now the only one you may have trouble with is the boss material in the chasm no worries that should be perfectly fine moving over to the attack talents now this is where things get slightly interesting because of this new mechanic right here the breakthrough which is a mechanic that only yelan has and it's a new one like i mentioned We'll talk about that here in just a second. But the normal attack performs up to four consecutive shots with a bow. Charge attack increases the aim shot damage. Has the torrential arrow that will deal hydro damage. Nothing really new there. But the breakthrough, Yelan will enter a breakthrough state after spending five seconds out of combat. Which will cause her next charge aim shot to have an 80% decreased charge time. This is pretty significant. And the reason being is because this is essentially a c6 ganyu if you don't know c6 ganyu decreases her charge shot time to where you can basically use it immediately if i'm not mistaken this is basically a c6 ganyu just on her normal attack talent pretty interesting now the thing or the caveat to that is that they have to uh, yelan has to spend five seconds out of combat not anything to really fret about because when you do your normal rotations this should be perfectly fine so that's interesting now um, and once charged, she can fire a breakthrough barb that will deal AoE hydro damage based on Yelan's max HP. This is going to be a reoccurring theme and something that I love about this character. We'll go more in detail about that, but it is her scaling and it is all max HP. I absolutely love that. I cannot stand when characters have split scaling, but anyways, we're not going to get too into detail about that. And then the plunging attack, pretty normal, pretty standard. Here are the stats not bad at all now the one that i'm focused on and that you should probably be focused on as well is the breakthrough barb damage based off of the max hp this is probably most likely going to hit like a truck moving on from there we have the elemental skill the lingering lifeline in a nutshell it has a tap and a hold and it allows yelan to move like the wind i absolutely love this now when this rapid movement ends the lifeline will explode Dealing Hydro damage to the marked opponents based on Yelan's max HP. You love to see it. Now with the hold, it engages and continues with movement. During which Yelan's resistance to interruption is increased. You guys know I love the resistance to interruption being increased. It's a fantastic mechanic that I love in this game. During this time, Yelan can control this rapid movement and end it by using this skill again. Additionally, each opponent marked by the lifeline when it explodes grants Yelan a 34% chance to reset her breakthrough state and that is the breakthrough barb it is fantastic I don't think enough people are talking about this elemental skill I think this elemental skill is great because it's doing a lot you have the resistance to interruption you have the resetting of the breakthrough state it's going to be doing I believe some pretty good damage as well I'll have to use it in game but on paper it looks pretty good damage wise 
but not only that something that it doesn't state that i saw within the gameplay and in the trailer it appears to have some slight cc capability so when you're holding and you're moving around you're wrapping the enemies up in the lingering lifeline when it explodes it appears to actually pull the enemies in ever so slightly nothing crazy nothing out of control but it still has a bit of cc and capabilities and that is fantastic it's always a great thing to have so the elemental skill phenomenal thumbs up i love it elemental burst this is where yelan is this is her bread and butter right here right this is what everybody's concerned about this is the comparisons to shing cho five star shing cho here depth clarion dice deals aoe hydro damage and creates an exquisite throw which aids her in battle she has the coordinated attacks once again dealing hydro damage based on yelan's max hp you love to see it can occur once every second when your active character uses a normal attack will occur each time yelan's yelan's lifeline explodes and hits opponents which is the elemental skill based off of the max hp what i really like about this as well as duration is 15 seconds cooldown 18 seconds i love that ratio not bad at all energy cost 70 right in the middle of the road this is what we've been seeing with these five stars not the highest not the lowest just kind of right in the middle but this has the coordinated attacks this is the comparison to shang Cho. this is where i believe most of her damage is going to be coming from it's a fantastic fantastic elemental burst and this is what really makes elon a great character couple that with the elemental skill the breakthrough barb damage the the aim shot and Yelan is just doing a lot of damage and she's just hitting like an absolute truck here are the talent ascension materials right here to level her talents up speaking about talents what you should probably prioritize now this is just my recommendation and opinion i think you should go elemental burst elemental skill and then the normal attack now if you want to switch the elemental skill and the normal attack and maybe test it out that way you can if you want to but of course i think to prioritize overall the elemental burst once again bread and butter fantastic now this is the talent materials she does require the prosperity books the uh insignias for the fatui so you're gonna need a lot of these because it's required for the talent and for her levels and then the azdaha boss material and then of course if you plan on crowning her you can crown her if you crown anything crown the elemental burst and then i think that's about it but i don't think necessarily crowning is necessary but if you want to you can waifu right now moving over to passive talents we're gonna go ahead and skip the first one go to the true first one which is turn control when the party has one two three or four element types yelan's max hp is increased by 6 12 18 and 30 percent respectively this is pretty decent what this is going to allow her to do is just do more damage because remember all of her skills are scaled off of her max hp so this is basically going to allow her to do more damage so when you're creating teams which we'll talk about that here in a little bit you may want to go for different element types so as an example for myself what i plan on doing team build wise is going like a kazua hu tao yelan and zhongli or a kazua yelan raiden shogun and zhongli that way i have four different element types and i'm getting the maximum hp bonus i'm maximizing this passive in a sense you don't have to if you go to hydro to geo whatever the case may be you're still going to get a decent uh percentage in the max hp and work out perfectly fine get the resonance all that good stuff might make up for it but you may want to try and maximize this talent if once again you want your yelan to hit the hardest and have her be a main dps moving on to the second passive absolutely adore this second passive adapt with ease so long as exquisite throw is in play keep in mind that's the elemental burst your own active character deals one percent more damage this is increased by a further 3.5 percent damage every second the maximum increase the damage dealt is 50 percent the pre-existing effect will be dispelled if depth clarion dice is recast during its duration once again the elemental burst now this is fantastic and i adore the second passive because this is where she sets herself apart from the whole shang cho argument has some supporting capabilities and allows for the active character to have passive damage increasing it's great i have to see it in game and really see what it's capable of but i think this is going to be a good passive that's going to really set her apart from other characters give her that bit of supporting capabilities while still being a main dps and outputting tremendous damage herself right 
so fantastic i absolutely love it moving on to the constellations now i do realize that most people will not have constellations on yelan maybe even including myself depends on my luck but i thought it's worth talking about because this is the ultimate guide for yelan and i want to cover all my bases so let's talk about the c1 lingering lifeline gains one additional charge that is the elemental skill basically this is like a sack bow and i like the c1 i think it's kind of underrated in my opinion just a little bit right it's not the most game breaking thing in the world but i like it because you're going to have remember the bit of cc'ing so if you can do that twice fantastic the elemental skill i think is going to be able to do some pretty good damage in of itself fantastic and then remember this has a 34 percent chance to reset her breakthrough state so this is obviously going to increase to 68 percent you know give or take right um for that breakthrough state you can do this twice and you don't have to worry about having a sack it's a sack bow so really i like it in my personal opinion i like it c2 this is the one that most people are focused on this is the one that if you're going for constellations the one that you're probably going for taking all comers when exquisite throw conducts a coordinated attack the elemental burst it will fire an additional water arrow that will deal 14 percent of yelan's max hp yeah love the max hp as hydro damage this effect can trigger once every 1.8 seconds this is what allows her to be more like xing cho have probably better reactions so with vape and things of that nature and you have that additional arrow to deal that damage so this is the one that most people are focused on this is the one that most people are going to be going for so if you're going for constellations this will probably be the sweet spot maybe we'll talk about the third one which is the c3 increasing the talent level for the elemental burst now i think in beta at some point in time i could be wrong i could be mistaken but i believe that in beta initially the elemental skill was c3 and the elemental burst was c5 and then they flip-flopped it which is nice because this is something that they've been doing as of lately with these new five stars they've been prioritizing whichever skill is more crucial or the bread and butter for the character so in this case the elemental burst is going to be i think a priority over the elemental skill for yelan so they went ahead and made it c3 so you get it sooner so this might be the sweet spot for some people c2 you could probably stop that and be perfectly fine but c3 increasing the talent level for the elemental burst great and then the c4 is kind of a throwaway in my opinion it's not really important the c4 for most five star characters are always going to be like a supporting type of constellation and this is the bait and switch where it increases all party members max hp by 10 percent for 25 seconds and for every opponent marked by the lifeline when the lifeline explodes a maximum increase of 40 percent max hp can be attained in this manner i mean it's nice right because it increases the hp for your characters meaning it makes them a little bit tankier and then some specific characters can take advantage of this greatly like zhongli comes to mind hu tao as an example but it's not really necessary for you to go that deep to get this like it's not one that you're going to be focusing on in my opinion per se but it's decent and then you have the c5 increasing the talent level for the elemental skill and then c6 is just in my opinion on paper kind of nutty i would have to see somebody with a c6 j lawn to see what it's really capable of in game but on paper it just sounds kind of broken so winner takes all indeed after using depth clarion dice which is the elemental burst yelan will enter the mastermind state this mastermind state is kind of nutty in this state all of yelan's normal attacks will be special breakthrough barbs excuse me these breakthrough barbs will have a similar ability to normal ones and the damage dealt will be considered charge attack damage excuse me dealing 150 uh, 56 percent of a normal breakthrough barbs damage the mastermind say last 20 seconds and will be clear after yelan fires five arrows i don't know what to say about this i just think this is kind of broken i think enemies would absolutely get decimated by this they will melt in my opinion it just it seems nutty you can let me know in the comments down below if i'm maybe like over analyzing this one or over hyping this one i think it's kind of broken so anyways guys that is Yelan within her kit, her talents, her ascension materials, her level up materials. That is everything that you need to know about Yelan herself. She's a fantastic character. She's going to be great. She's going to enhance anyone's account. And she's going to be able to do damage while being able to support the team 
slightly. She's just a fantastic character overall. A character that I consider to be extremely well-rounded. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead at this time and talk about the weapons that you can utilize with this character. And I will tell you with the Elon, she is in no short of bows or options that she can utilize for herself. Now, of course, we have to talk about the best in slot first. Aqua, I cannot pronounce the second name. This is definitely going to be her best in slot. Obviously, her signature weapon. And the reason being for the substat of the crit damage, really fantastic because her ascension was crit rate. So you have a good split there. And then the HP is increased by 16%. Once again, going back to her scaling being max HP for her damage, this is fantastic when there are opponents nearby the damage dealt by the wielder of this weapon is increased by 20 percent why <laughs> this will take effect whether the character is on the field or not so it doesn't matter this is insane so this weapon is great it's gonna be cracked on her it's gonna be broken obviously the best we're gonna talk about the five stars first and move over to the four stars we have what i believe is going to be a great option for her. now this is not particularly in any order this is just my recommendation on what I believe is going to work. And I want to give you several different options so you can take a look at your account and decide what would be best for your Elon based on what you have on your account. So the Polar Star, I think this is going to be great if you do have this weapon. I don't, unfortunately. But if you do, this is going to be great because you have the uh, substat of the crit rate. So between her um, level up ascension being crit rate and the substat being crit rate, meaning you can then full send crit damage and not have to worry about the crit rate. And the reason why I think this is going to be good is because the elemental skill and elemental burst damage increased by 12%. Like I mentioned, the elemental skill and the elemental burst is where I believe her damage is really going to be coming from outside of the breakthrough barb that you'll get every so often. Unless you have a C6 Yelon, nutty. Um, so this is great. After a normal attack, charge attack, anything that you do hits an opponent. One stack of the Night Star will be gained for 12 seconds. You have the 1, 2, 3, and 4 stacks. And the attack is increased by those percentages respectively. So I believe this is going to be a good bow that you can utilize on your Yelan if you have it lying around. Now, the next one that I wanted to speak about, and this is once again for main DPS Yelan, Polar Star. And then the next one, if you don't have her signature weapon, is the Skyward Harp. Now, the reason being substat crit rate, full send crit damage, increases crit damage by 20%. Always fantastic. And then the hits have a 60% chance to do the AoE attack, dealing 125% physical damage. Skyward Harp is just universally a great bow for just about any character, if not any character. Um, and I believe this is going to be a good one for main DPS Yelan. Now, if you're going to support Yelan, Elegy for the end is going to be a pretty good option. The reason being because you have the energy recharge for the substats, meaning you won't run into any energy recharge problems, hopefully. And then you have the elemental mastery increasing. And if you gain the sigils, you're going to be buffing your allies damage um, based on the sigils that you have. And it increases the attack by 20%. Fantastic support bow. Once again, if you're going support Yelan with the coordinated attacks, her second passive, you couple the elegy for the end, what it's doing. And now you have your allies hitting like an absolute train i did i wanted to say truck again but I, I feel like i've been using truck a lot so we're gonna say train this time for the elegy for the end so not bad now some honorable mentions for the five stars thundering pulse it will work right if you don't have anything else and this is your only five star bow and you're not using on yoimiya thundering pulse will work right because you have the subset of the crit damage very very nice and it increased the attack by 20 percent and then you have some more normal attack damage increasing. So the the increase in the attack percent is going to be nice, right? That general attack increase. The only thing that I don't like is that it's just it's increasing normal attack damage, which is I don't believe something that you'll necessarily be doing with the Elon per se. I'm sure you will be at some point in time, but I don't think that's going to be like your main objective. So it's it, it'll work though. It, you'll be able to utilize this and be perfectly fine right as an honorable mention i'm not a huge fan of the amos bow on yelan one because of the substat just being attacked two increases normal and charge attack damage by 12 percent i understand that this could work and it will do damage and you can utilize it once again if you just don't have anything else and it's lying around i just don't personally recommend it for yelan because of her kit her and, and her gameplay the way you will be using her doesn't necessarily lean towards this per se but once again, if you have it lying around, 
it'll work and you don't have any other options so those are the five stars moving over to the four star um the one that i did want to mention first is the fading twilight which is the new four star bow that will be coming i believe in a new event now this is actually going to be a pretty good one and the reason being once again subset energy recharge uh, alleviating those energy recharge problems that you might run into it has three states which increases damage dealt by those percentages respectively and then when the attacks an opponent this weapon will switch to the next state this weapon can change states once every se seven seconds now this would be an issue if this part didn't exist the character equipping this weapon can still trigger the state switch while not on the field phenomenal if this wasn't here I don't believe you would be able to switch to all three states, but the fact that this part exists right here, I believe now makes this Fading Twilight weapon usable, viable, and something that you can try on your Yelan. I like it, and with the event, you may be able to R5 it. We'll have to wait and see, but that'll be great if you could. Now, moving over to the other four stars, we have the Sackbow which you can use for the energy recharge and then being able to reset your elemental skills so you get particles back for your elemental burst you do more damage you have the ccing capabilities you have the breakthrough state right like the sackbo is basically c1 yelan so if you don't have c1 yelan sackbo will give you that so not bad of an option the other one that i am leaning towards heavily is the stringless now the elemental mastery is not really all that great as a substat for Yelan, but it increases elemental skill and elemental burst damage by 24%. I love this. I love this because that's where her damage, in my opinion, is going to be coming from. So I think the Stringless is going to be an option. Now we have the Black Cliff War Bow. Universally, just a great bow for any character bow user because of the substat of the crit damage and then the attack increasing. Every bow user can use that, in my opinion. So, Black Cliff, always a great, universally good weapon. And then the other ones, I mean, you can try it. You can see what they're capable of. Um, and especially if you don't have anything else. But at, as of the four stars, those will probably be the ones that I would recommend specifically. Um, and once again, if you want to try different ones, if you feel as if another four star bow would work better... Um, more power to you. Those are just the ones that I recommend uh, for Ye Yeelan. And those will probably be the ones that I try. Right. Now, at this time, we are going to transition to artifacts. Now, I'm going to list off some artifacts that I think are going to work. Give you some options. First, we're going to start out with main DPS Yeelan. If you're going for a main DPS Yeelan, you have some options. The first one is the two-piece heart of depth for the hydro damage bonus. And the two-piece tenacity for the uh, HP increase by 20%. This is going to be great because once again, all of her scaling is HP for damage. So that's nice. And then the hydro damage bonus is a given. So I think this is going to be great for a main DPS Elon. The other one is the Emblem of Severed Fate for the two-piece energy recharge. So it alleviates the energy recharge problems. And then the four-piece increasing the elemental burst damage by 25% of the energy recharge. So... Once again, going back to where I believe her bread and butter is going to be within the Elemental Burst. This is always going to be nice for your Yelan. This is a great domain to farm because this is a universal set that you can place on multiple different characters. I believe the Emblem of Severed Fate domain is just going to be where you spend your Raisins and they be the most efficient place to spend them, right? If you're going two-piece tenacity, two-piece heart of depth, this could be a little more difficult to get unless you already have those two artifacts set and ready to go you have some cracked pieces already if not this might be just a little more difficult to get you might be spending more raisins it just might not be the most efficient where then i would recommend the emblem of severed fate moving on from there we do have the support yelan and if you're going support yelan or like sub dps yelan i think the noblesse is a great set to go ahead and put on her once again the elemental burst damage for the two piece very very nice and then for the four piece, using an elemental burst increases all party members attack by 20% for 12 seconds. You couple that with Elegy of the End, the second passive, and you and the coordinated attacks. And now you have your allies just doing tremendous amount of damage. And so I think the Noblesse is a great support Yelan build if you're going for that. And then if you just want to kind of go outside of the box, maybe try something just a little wonky and different, you can go 
four piece wanderer's troop if you want to or like two piece wanderer's troop uh two piece emblem two piece wanderer's troop two piece uh noblesse i mean you can get nutty with it after that and try and, and to your heart's content <laughs> and do some testing uh but those are those are my recommendations uh in terms of the artifact sets now when we're talking about the artifact build so let's go ahead and click in here if we're talking about this specific build the flower and the feather is obvious right what you're going to be getting but if we're talking about the sands i believe you should go with an hp percent sands it had a hydro damage percent goblet and then just depending on what you need more of crit rate or crit damage circlet you just have to take a look at your build your ratio and see what you need more of probably going to be crit damage but um needless to say this is what i believe the build should be for the sands goblet and circlet and then for the substats on your artifacts, you should go universally with what you want on your DPS characters. You know, obviously the crit damage, crit rate, attack percent, and then possibly, or not possibly, but probably energy recharge percent. You want to make sure you have that within your substats so you don't run into any problems, especially if you're not running a battery alongside your Yelan. And then, of course, if you have some HP percent within your substats, don't get upset about that because she can utilize it right this is the one character max hp she can utilize hp percent so if you have that within your subsets that's fine you just want to make sure it doesn't completely roll hp percent so that is just my recommendation when it comes to the build once again to reiterate substats crit damage crit rate energy recharge attack percent hp percent sands hydro damage percent goblet crit rate or crit damage circlet probably crit damage so that is for the artifacts now in terms of team build this is where things just kind of get a little you have i mean there's so many different options that you can choose um i guess i would just tell you my recommendation or at least what i'm doing i'm gonna be going probably kazua yelan hu tao shongli or if not hu tao place replace hu tao with raiden shogun for the battery and more coordinated attacks I mean, you could throw Venti instead of Kazuha. You can go ahead and put Ganyu in there if you want to go ahead and try some possible freeze teams. Um, Ayaka. There's just so many <laughs> different options when it comes to Yelan because she's going to be a character that can fit into any team comp. In my opinion, any team comp, you slot her in and she's going to work out well. But like, if you're asking what I believe is going to probably be the best, or probably do the most is a, a combination of Kazuo and Zhongli, Yelan, and then you put any other character in there with her. Um, maybe a Xiongling, uh, maybe Sucrose. There's just so many different options. So many. If you want to go double hydro for whatever reason, Mona or Xingqiu, you can go double hydro. Many different options that you could choose from kind of uh get creative with it if you want to and see what type of team build would be best for you and for your account and uh, i think you should just simply have fun with it in my opinion have fun with it try different things there's no wrong answer genshin is not difficult enough to where you need to make the the most optimal uh meta team you can probably slot some wonky team comps together and get some great results either way that's just how genshin is right but anyways guys i believe i covered everything if there was anything that i missed let me know in the comments down below but i believe that is everything when it comes to yelan and what it entails hopefully this guide helped hopefully this was the guide the only one that you would need to get yourself ready for yelan and have all of your questions answered in terms of what she's doing how to build her and what's the best way to go about it and you you know once again it's your account you do whatever that you want to do in terms of yelan and how you want to build her but with that being said we will be going live on the 31st of may which is a tuesday for me for polls for yelan and we'll see if we get lucky i hope to see you all out there i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was helpful i'll see you guys in the next one remember to stand out be different have fun go further beyond in everything that you do and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. My name is Cody. Bye, guys. <laughs>